When one of our loved ones passes away, often holding a funeral is the best way to feel a sense of closure. But what happens to those forgotten souls? For Calvin Gaydon, it's just another day of work. Every day, same thing over and over. The monotonous tasks never get old, even after 39 years. Did it too, all the day, good to me. Calvin's a grave digger at Roselawn Cemetery. And on Tuesday morning, he and his crew are preparing a hole for a funeral that will take place tomorrow afternoon. Okay, we got to find the cone first, lay the light out, and then make sure the grave go in the right spot, and then we lay it off. Roselawn manager Marilyn Dunnigan says they hold about five funerals a week. Dunnigan's primary role is dealing with the family of the deceased. People are really going through a difficult time when they lose a loved one and it's rewarding to be able to help them make those final arrangements. Roselawn is one of countless cemeteries that help families deal with the grieving process. A gravesite provides closure, a place to visit, and a memorial to honor those that have passed. But what happens to the forgotten? I mean, it's sad. You know, somebody lives a life and there's nobody there, I guess, to, to pay final respects to them. The job of Chief Investigator Shane Evans in the East Baton Rouge Coroner's Office is to answer that question, but it's never simple. We really dig down hard trying to find family. Yeah, so they're sealed in the back. The Coroner's Office is entrusted with about three to four unclaimed bodies each month, Evans says, but they can't hold them forever. We don't want to say 14 days and then a, a family member shows up at 15 days. These unclaimed bodies include stillborn babies abandoned at the hospital. The baby in there. Bodies that families don't claim simply because they can't afford to bury or cremate them. And others are either homeless or have no next of kin. What I'll call a bit of a ghost existence because they're just not social. And that's okay. Um, there's a gentleman half a mile from here that hangs around the post office. And he, I mean, he walks around the rain. Even when it's cold, I've seen him. I mean, I know this guy's living. And when he dies, he's going to be our responsibility. There's no doubt in my mind. If a body isn't claimed after that time, the coroner's office will have it cremated, a process that costs them about $420. The coroner's office will keep these ashes up to six months, still waiting on family or friends to claim them. I mean, if somebody doesn't notice somebody missing in six months, they're probably not going to have anybody show up. When it's time to clear the shelf, Evans and his team take the remains to a corner of Magnolia Cemetery. It was called Potter's Row, and years ago they would bury paupers along that fence. Well, so we spread the ashes along the fence at the end of a little driveway there, so we know exactly where we're spreading those ashes. If 10 years from now somebody comes and says, look, my father died in 2015, and I understand that y'all spread his ashes, I would like to go visit that place. We can take them there. A crumbling cemetery more than 150 years old. It's a fitting funeral ground for the remains of those left behind. And even though there's no headstone, no urn, no claimer, that crooked fence on the corner of 19th Street is the best memorial a ghost can ask for. You know, it's a, we're all on that same train together. You know, at some point we're gonna all meet our, our end. And you know, we hope that we live a life that leaves people wanting to remember us. Taylor Curette, Tiger TV. In 2014, the East Baton Rouge Coroner's Office reported 69 pauper cremations. If you have any questions or would like to know more information about this process, please visit ebrcoroner.com.